Hi, this is Marcus Bianchi with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. I'm going to talk to you about uh, buildings modeling and how it's used for bottom-up uh, load modeling um, of uh, large uh, sets of buildings all together. So this presentation will focus on what building energy simulation tools are, um, what are they used for, some examples of uh, building energy simulation tools. Spend a little bit more time talking about Energy Plus. It's one of those uh, uh, tools that uh, you know the U.S. Uh, Department of Energy uh, supports and has been working on. Um, and, and that's just an overview of uh, building energy simulation tools. Obviously, we can't give. Uh, uh, a total uh, overview, given that, that this is sometimes a, a full uh, college course uh, in, uh, in, uh, in graduate school. Um, so what is it, um, a building energy simulation tool? It's a, generally a physics-based software simulation. It could actually be uh, uh, an aggregate of data that, uh, that uh, predicts how much energy is used in buildings. It usually takes a few inputs, um, such as the geometry, um, the materials used, the construction materials, what kind of lighting, HVAC, mechanical systems are used, refrigeration tools, um, water heating, renewable energy component, efficiencies and control strategies all together as inputs. So you have to describe the building somewhat. And then, uh, it takes into uh, an input of climate, uh, so you have to know where this building is located. Usually we do that the, uh, by a description of the climate. Usually hourly data is available. Um, so we know, for example, the temperatures outside, the solar radiation, um, the wind. So a series of uh, uh, the humidity and so on, a series of situations that uh, that we uh, we can take into account uh, together with those inputs. The the tool itself is, uh, as I mentioned, a physics based uh, uh, tool um, that usually, not always, but usually uses hourly data um, to run, let's say, annual simulations. Usually, the climate files uh, involve a full year. There are different climate files to use, and then. From all of that, it generates uh, thermal loads, the system response, how much energy is used every hour, occupant comfort, um, and then obviously because we know the energy at each time, we can calculate the energy cost. So this is a very brief overview. Um, and obviously for us, uh, when we're discussing uh, doing bottom-up uh, um, load modeling, we really are trying to figure out how much energy is used, not by a single building. So we need to get a, a, a number of buildings together in a grid, and then we decided, you know, how does that work? Obviously, um, there'll be a separate module that talks about specifically um, examples of uh, tools that can be used to do um, in, a, in a whole um, situation a, a district, a neighborhood, um, maybe a city, maybe a, a whole country, um, how, how you can actually model it. Building energy simulation tools can be used for a number of uh, different uses. Um, generally, we use for architectural design because we can actually decide on trade-offs on the energy use, right? Um, for example, larger windows, smaller windows, if you have a larger windows, you may have to compensate somehow with uh, more insulation, for example. Um, it can be used for HVAC design and operations. So how large can, do you need, for example, an air conditioning system to, uh, to be installed in a building to uh, satisfy the loads and needs? Um, a lot of building codes and standards development. So we, uh, to determine if um, a set of measures um, should or should not be included in the building codes and standards, we need to consider are they cost effective? 
do they save energy actually in, in different climates? So we consider the different climates for developing of codes and standards. Um, for voluntary building label programs, examples may be um, USGBC LEED, um, Energy Star, and, and other building label programs that uh, require a certain compliance with energy use. Um, can be done for energy audits and inspections. So one can, can determine if uh, a certain set of measures actually uh, satisfied a certain energy use. Um, it, this is, next one is essentially uh, architectural design. So can you trade off different energy efficiency measures? Um, building stock analysis is, uh, is a major part of uh, doing the bottom-up um, uh, simulations uh, and, and load prediction and forecasts, and certainly for research. So when we are doing performing research to, uh, to, uh, to determine if certain measures would be uh, advantageous or disadvantageous, for example, if you should consider cool roofs, uh, white you know, roofs um, to reflect solar radiation in hot climates, you can determine the benefits during the, the summer and maybe the penalties that you may have in the winter time when we actually would like to have solar radiation uh, on the roof. Um, the steps to performing a simulation are, this is a, a pretty simple, you, you have to create a building description, um, considering all the inputs that I already discussed, you have to determine the climate. Um, a building, for example, in, the, in Alaska, uh, obviously will not uh, behave the same way that it would behave, let's say, in Southeast Asia, so you have to account for the local climate. The simulation itself, which involves uh, an engine that does the simulation, and the analysis of the results to actually perform comparisons and so on. I'll try to give you some examples of that. Um, a, a few examples of uh, building energy simulation tools to consider. Um, energy Plus is what uh, um, the U.S. Department of Energy supports, uh, with Open Studio being um, the operating system. Um, DO2.2 uh, is the old, uh, or the previous version of the tool that uh, used to be uh, uh, sponsored by the Department of Energy. Energy Gauge is a different one. Equest is uh, based on DO2, but it has a, 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 an interface that is uh, somewhat friendly. ESBR, Transys, and, 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 and there, there are many others. Uh, I'm just giving you a few examples um, to consider um, what, what we use to make uh, um, building energy simulation. Um, if you look at the uh, US DOE's energy modeling ecosystem, um, we have a certain number of apps and integrated services. We have the engine and the data itself all under a, a platform with the idea of creating outcomes such as consistent, reliable, rapid, and transparent um, outcomes from buildings. So we know how, um, how you can uh, have uh, um, buildings and compare buildings' performance and so on. Um, Energy Plus itself, uh, and, and I'm just using this as an example. Um, there could be other examples that are very, very um, much used in different parts of the world. Um, but the capabilities of Energy Plus here uh, uses, uh, it, it can determine using the essentially the energy conservation, right, what we call heat balance method here, uh, to determine surface temperatures, we can determine thermal comfort, we can, uh, we can consider, for example, radiant systems. Um, it, it involves uh, lighting and shading, airflow within and between zones. It looks at component level uh, mechanical systems. So different aspects could be considered such as um, variable frequency or integrated heat pumps. Um, you can get um, equipment to do sub-hourly, even though the simulation may be um, for every hour, you can actually perform simulations uh, sub-hourly. Um, you can look at demand response and occupant behavior. You can do simulations in parallel. Um, um, it's a 
different, you know, the software paradigm. It's an open source, transparent and co collaborative. Um, migrate to C++ uh, in 2014. Um, and, and it's fully documented. I think it's really important that if anybody is trying to understand it, is uh, fully documented. But this is the engine. The engine is not necessarily um, user friendly itself because it actually creates the results, but you may need an interface uh, to work on it. And that in interface that, uh, that has been uh, um, very much in use is, uh, is, is the operating system itself. It's called Open Studio. Um, I, I really don't want to spend a lot of time on this other than to say that um, it creates a, a series of good interfaces for both describing the building in different aspects and then do comparisons and parametric analysis of the different runs. Um, so this environment for building energy simulations is, uh, is, is really helpful to, uh, to, for somebody uh, that needs to, to perform those simulations. Based on this, based on this uh, set of uh, works, um, bottom-up simulations um, for forecasting the demand have been developed. Um, I'm not going to spend time on this here other than to say building energy simulations tools are the base for, for creating different tools that actually can take into account not a single building itself, but a, a, a set of several buildings interacting together with the uh, the uh, the grid um, and uh, predicting response for different situations. Um, when we perform building energy simulations, we uh, we usually do for for comparing uh, different options. Um, the the way we approach a single building, and I'm using this just because. I, I want to give that idea first as the base for talking about a, a deeper um, simulation of a set of buildings. Um, we try to reduce the loads first of a building. So we try to make sure that the loads are small enough. So, you know, with envelope measures, um, changing orientation, uh, setting the lighting, for example, going from incandescent and the incandescent lights, light bulbs to uh, compacted fluorescence and now to LED. All of those were significant gains in energy efficiency, reducing plug loads, um, then trying to match the equipment to those loads. And so we know what's the, the load and we try to actually get the equipment the right size to do that. Um, then, you know, there's a process of making sure that the building delivers as it is. And uh, after build, we actually do constant evaluation and try to keep keep it as simple as possible um, to actually in the end consider should we invest in renewable energy generation locally, for example, in this building. Um, so if we're going to go to a zero energy building, uh, there is an element of uh, generation that is necessary. So the building itself has to generate enough to compensate for the uses that are, are needed by the building. Um, this is a, um, a graph that we, uh, we use at NREL quite a bit to, uh, um, to describe uh, the cost of a life of a, of a building and then the percentage of energy savings depending on different measures of energy efficiency that we can do. Uh, each point in this uh, graph um, is a, a, a set of measures all together. Um, so it's a, a single building description that calculates on the y-axis how much does it cost to both buy this building over time and energy use altogether. So every, um, for the lifetime of the building, in this case commercial buildings, um, you can have, for example, one building that, uh, that delivers uh, more energy savings if it's more to the right. And if it's a, a lower cost, it's closer to the x axis on the bottom. So uh, if, 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 if possible, you're trying to get 
a set of conditions that gets you the most close to the bottom and uh, the most to the right of this figure. Each one of those simulations that, that are here, and there are, there are hundreds of simulations in this graph um, with different measures, different conditions, and so on, to, to describe the different buildings. And the curve that is in the bottom, the black curve, is the minimum cost curve. So as we go, we're trying to actually get to the very bottom. In this case, it gets to about 40% energy savings and an annual not annual, a lifetime cost of like a little bit under uh, $2.1 million. Um, dollars. Um, we can see that the starting point may be a given point um, close to 0%. So it, let's say it's the, uh, the cold building, and that building would cost, you know, a little bit uh, below uh, $2.4 to operate over its lifetime and that the cost of the building itself. And then as you, you, you add energy efficiency measures, there's an additional cost to, uh, to perform, to, to, to install, let's say, more insulation, um, a cool roof, for example, or a better equipment and so on. And, you know, you, you keep moving towards uh, a minimum cost point. And so at, at a minimum cost point, right at the bottom there, you almost at 40% energy savings from your original and it costs less to operate and to pay for the building. Obviously, there might be a, an, an initial cost that is higher, that gets to be mortgage over time, but because of the energy utilities, uh, the savings, um, the overall cost for the lifetime is, is um, it's smaller. Um, there is a cost neutral point that I find it always interesting to point out because um, at this point, you can have savings of close to 60% in this particular simulation, but you is have essentially the same cost. You're just trading off um, the initial cost that is more money uh, up front to actually make the building better. Um, but you, you, because of the lower uh, utility bills, you may have this, uh, the same uh, cost. In this case, I'm sorry, I said hundreds, but there are like 3,000 simulations in this graph. The point of saying all of that is so you understand how building energy simulation can be used to determine like how one single building can be better. Um, so this is uh, an overview of uh, building energy simulation tools. Um, I think it's important to point out that there are many building energy simulation tools. They are used for a variety of purposes, uh, from building design to research studies. Um, the one that we use the most is Energy Plus, uh, associated with Open Studio as the operating system, as interface. And um, parametric studies can provide comparisons um, and, and determine which energy efficiency measures you could or, or, or you should or should not include in the simulations. Um, overall, all of this is to prepare you to understand, okay, what is one given tool? How can that actually be used in, a, in a, a large set of buildings all operating together, some of them residential, some of them commercial, um, and uh, predict a demand uh, on a little electricity demand, depending on like the pathways that uh, are chosen for the building designs. Um, if you have questions about this presentation or any of the presentations you've seen, you can contact uh, Sika and Isabel uh, for additional questions. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening to me today.